Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a quick look at the new features available in the Kerbal Space Program Asteroid Redirect Mission, which we are going to call ARM. I'm just going to create a game here because the first thing I want to do is click on the flags and you see here we have an official NASA approved Kerbal flag. I'm going to accept that start this game and then we're going to take a look at some of the, the new bits and pieces that have been added. Now, I have to make it clear, this is not Kerbal Space Program 0.24. This is an interim release with a large number of changes to the core game, uh, but lacking some of the career mode and various other updates, which were to be uh, introduced. So one improvement you see here right away is that you can now time accelerate from this window here. Um, now, if we go to the tracking station, we can actually see the next thing. If we zoom out, let's see if we've got one. Oh, look, we have some mystery objects. These are, of course, the asteroids off the redirect mission. So if you want to follow an object, uh, you can click on track object. Oh, and it'll tell you that this thing is going to encounter Kerbin and actually it is going to enter but not escape which you know what that means it means the periaps distance of uh, or the perikey as we would say is less than the radius of the planet we have an impactor here this is a c-class object about seven to ten meters in radius they are certainly not the largest objects they are fairly massive nonetheless but we are now going to track that one I can click on some others. We could see if there's some bigger ones. Class C, Class E. They are proper behemoths. Let's uh, start tracking this one as well. That one is going to pass within 3,000 kilometers. And this one is a Class C. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the new items that have been added to the parts list. These are all NASA approved items that are part of uh, the Space Launch System. Let's just bring a capsule in here so we have something to attach them to. Now the main thing is the 3.5, 3.75 meter parts, right? We have this tank, we have this, the half length tank, and we have the quarter length tank here. Now, uh, if we bring up the Rockamax for comparison, we'll just stick that on the side there, you'll see that Pretty much, these this is the same length as the Rockamax, but uh, significantly thicker. It is 82 tons as opposed to the Rockamax, which is a mere 36 tons, a veritable supermodel in comparison. Even the half-length tank masses more than the Rockamax, which is of course the gold, I mean orange standard for heavy lifters. So now I imagine the S3-1440 14400 tank will be the thing against which every other heavy lifter is judged. Now, of course, because it's a heavy lifter, you have some suitably heavy engines. You have the S3 KS25 times 4. That's obviously a reference to the RS25 engines which are being targeted for the uh, NASA Space Launch System, which will also have a cluster of four engines on the bottom. Interesting to note is that you cannot attach anything underneath this. If you want to attach something underneath, you have the K2RL one, which will let you actually build a stage underneath if you so desire. So that's the engines here. We also have these uh, external boosters. These have fuel and engines attached, I believe. It doesn't tell you what type of engines they have, but uh, it gets a fair amount of thrust. It gets... You know what, these could possibly be RS-25 engines in a slightly different guise. Now, this would work as a an external booster, but you can, of course, stack extra fuel tanks on top and give yourself a stretched external liquid-fueled throttleable booster if you want such a thing. And if you want a solid rocket booster, we have these new SRB KD25Ks, which get you more thrust and more fuel and uh, more bang, so to speak. So that's the new parts in this section. The, in the structural, we have a, a suitable, uh, let's just do this, we have a suitable um, adapter and we have a decoupler. There is no stack separator at this time, but I imagine that's just an over uh, something that's been overlooked and we will see one soon enough. 
let's uh, use this as a test spacecraft to investigate or to demonstrate the final part. What we're going to do here is add a suitable uh, decoupler here. What I want to do is demonstrate the um, the launch escape system. Now this is under the utility section. There's two new parts under utility. We have adva the advanced grabbing unit, which is all very nice. It lets you have a claw for grabbing asteroids so you can redirect them. After all, that's what the asteroid redirect mission is all about. Or you can have this launch escape system here which, uh, of course, NASA being a safety-conscious organization, they're all about this. So let's actually show you how to make the Space Launch System's uh, escape system actually work. Now let's just imagine, I'm going to say we have a typical spacecraft here. So typically you will have a docking port in front of this, that's one thing I would say, because typically this will be docking with something, so you want to stick that on the front of your rocket. It's really designed for the large capsule. You're going to want a pair of parachutes at the very least attached to this. And uh, that is, you know, that is a working launch escape system. Now to make it work, you're going to have to assign it to action groups. The abort group is attached to the delete key typically. So the two things you want to happen when you abort is you want to decouple this and then you want to activate this engine. Now this thing will only fire for about half a second but it will give you quite a lot of thrust and it will be asymmetric thrust designed to pull you clear of the spacecraft. Now once this is fired you probably want an action group to associate the decoupling of the um, this uh, the launch escape system and you probably also want to fire these parachutes here so I'm going to deploy these chutes. So let's just demonstrate this thing in action and see if it actually works. Okay, well this is not a rocket that looks particularly amazing, but here we go. Throttle up to 100%, hit space, and we're going upwards. Look at that. New, uh, new rocket, I guess. New looks, new awesomeness. And uh, now we're ready to hit the delete key to fire this, and then the zero key once we are clear. Ready? Look at that! Oh, away it goes while the rest of the spacecraft shoots off into the sky on its journey to wherever it's going. And uh, now this has fallen away, let's press zero to fire the parachutes and separate the launch escape system. Ooh. Oh dear, yes, a little bit of paint scraping there, but honestly, I am sure the crew are happy to be alive. Well, Jebediah Kerman certainly seems to be happy regardless, but when is he ever not happy? So that's how to integrate the new launch escape system to use it for fun and profit and saving of Kerbal lives. Let's go back and look at some other changes. Now there's another couple of things that I've noticed as well is the LV-1 and the LV-1R have both had their maximum thrust increased to 4 which is a nice boost and honestly one that was really needed. Uh, in the utility section the ION engine has had its thrust multiplied by a factor of 4 and its power requirements cut by uh, 4 as well. So you're going to be able to get four times as much acceleration out of this. And now it's technically possible to land with an ion engine on some places or to build a better ion aircraft. And that's exactly what I did. I built a sleeker, more awesomer looking ion powered aircraft. It's a delta wing and it, it uh, actually gets up to speed really quickly. You can see in fact that I'm able to turn this more or less and turn out over the landscape before I reach the rest of the space center. It doesn't have a huge amount of wing surface but it is a very light uh, spacecraft or a very light aircraft minimal amount of control surfaces and it's actually pretty narrow which is why I'm gonna try putting it through the tunnel. Here we go, just yeah, just a little low, a little low and excellent and roll and pull up. Ha <laughs> look at that. Ion power for the win. It manages about 50 meters per second at ground level and you'll notice that as it banks a little too much, it loses, uh, its battery starts to get sucked into. Um, it has about 20 little solar panels on it, which means it should at peak generate about 15 units of power. It needs 12 to run the ion engine. So I think 
Uh, we've got just a little bit of extra room there, but it flies really nicely. Now, unfortunately, I originally thought maybe I could get this thing to go to orbit, but I've tried, and it really takes a long time to try this kind of thing with a <laughs> with this. Oh, let's try turning around here. Maybe I can put it back on the runway. Uh, because it has, basically it all comes down to like glide ratio. And none of the wings provide, produce a decent enough glide ratio to have a serious chance of land of flying into space. What happens is to get the lift that we need, you produce a certain amount of drag, and the drag pretty much never decreases. So uh, you get up to a reasonable top speed, but getting one of these things into space entirely powered by ion engines is a challenge. I'm not saying it's not it's not possible. <gasps> I'm saying that I've had a very hard time doing it. Okay, come on. Come on. Just get, I want to get down before I run out of runway. This is almost has a little bit of an infinity glider on. I literally had to use the smallest control surfaces. Yes, yes, come on. Stop before you go off the end of the runway. No, 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 no. Oh, crap. Okay, we dinged that a little. Um... But, but, by, by uh, fixing the landing gear, we should be able to get it back up. Excellent! And it's now capable of flying again. Now, I think... I think I might be able to land this on the roof of the vehicle assembly building. Because this flies really, really, really slowly. So, if I can just make it touch down on top of the vehicle assembly building, then it should be slow enough that it kills velocity quickly enough. I'm going to just lift up. Fold away that gear, because it looks sleeker. I, I will, of course, use that landing gear once I get to the vehicle assembly building, but it looks a lot cooler when I don't have that deployed. Uh, the landing gear, although it displays a mass of 0.5 tons per, per uh, wheel, none of that matters. The landing gear is physicsless. It doesn't matter whether it's folded in or out. It will not generate any mass or any drag or anything at this time. It's one of these things the developers have been wanting to work on. But uh, let's try this. Okay, cutting the engine. And my idea is I'm going to glide upwards. And I'm going way too fast. Okay, see if I can stall this thing. No, I just can't slow this down. Okay, slide onto my butt. Slide and... Hey, successful touchdown. I only lost 75% of my control surfaces. Well, that's a quick look at the part changes. We'll look at capturing an asteroid in the next episode. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.